Thank you very much. I'm uh, really delighted to be here. I was here last year and had a great time. It was so good. I got the t-shirt. Um, but um, yeah, like I say, I really like WordPress and the WordPress community uh, because um, it does empower people um, in a world full of kind of uh, social media sites where you're restricted to a kind of little box uh, as to what you can publish. Uh, WordPress uh, gives us this opportunity to take ownership of you know everything from uh, the design of our sites, the content, all the photography, and even you know security issues. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about today um, is uh, the user experience of the sites, particularly if you have downloaded um, a site from uh, the WordPress theme. So pre-made themes. Um, so I don't know if you've seen this screen. This is when you go on WordPress.com and you have a huge variety of different uh, designs that you can choose from. Am I getting a bit of feedback? Um, now, the thing is, right, like none of us live in California and the content we have doesn't look like any of this. Um, it more often looks like this. Um, and so uh, the trouble is, right, like um, we have to adapt things to how uh, our sites work. We have to make decisions. We have to design things. Uh, and so this is where user experience design comes in. And so the first question uh, we might want to ask is, what is, <laughs> okay, uh, what is user experience design? Um, so uh, does anyone have a good definition of user experience design that they want to share? From Ahmed at the back. Okay, and anyone else? That's good. That's good. In an accessible way. In an accessible way. Um, does everyone put your hand up if uh, you don't know what user experience design is, or you've never heard of user experience design? So, so uh, one person there. Uh, you may have seen this photo, um, and I, I like this photo. It's, it's problematic in some ways, uh, but what I like about it is that it illustrates the breakdown between the designer's intent and the actual user's experience. Um, and so, um, you know, like the designer had a good idea of how this was gonna work and the consumer, the user, just uh, walked straight over it. What is problematic about this photo is it doesn't show true usage. Uh, so we don't know how many people are walking across the mud we don't know what it's like when it's rainy and people don't want to get mud on their shoes. And uh, importantly, uh, we don't know about accessibility requirements. Um, so the, the muddy path is not going to be good for people that you know, uh, maybe can't get up the curb uh, for whatever reason. Uh, so uh, this is a diagram from Jesse James Garrett in his book, The Elements of User Experience. And this came out in about 2003 and really helped promote the idea of user experience design amongst uh, the web design community. And uh, the way it's presented is as a design process. So previously, people would just design a site, do some HTML, put their content up, and uh, be done with it. Uh, whereas in here, uh, people started thinking about navigation design, uh, information architecture, uh, content strategy and uh, user needs and project objectives. Um, this is uh, Don Norman, and uh, he was the first person to have user experience designer in his job title uh, in the 80s at Apple. Uh, and he wrote this book, The Design of Everyday Things, about usability uh, problems. And his definition of user experience design is that user experience encompasses all aspects of the end user's interaction with the company, its services, and its products. Um, so this is a very broad definition of uh, user experience, going way beyond um, just usability and um, 
things like that. So I think it's more interesting to ask why is UX? Like, why do we have it? Why do we need to think about UX? Um, <laughs> this is a good reason why we need to, because we'll be in the middle of a presentation and uh, the computer will stop uh, showing. Okay. Um, so why is UX? Uh, and uh, I think it is helpful to think about this in the context of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, so you may know Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It basically suggests that if we're hungry and we lack shelter, we can't think very much about the meaning of life, about self-actualization. And we can translate this into uh, terms on the web uh, with a hierarchy of user needs. Uh, so at the very base level, your site must be functional for someone to access it. Uh, it must be reliable, uh, usable, and uh, convenient. And uh, beyond that, you get experiences which uh, make something that you want to come back to again and again. And we can see plenty of examples in web history where user experience was a differentiator. It was a competitive asset. Um, so uh, an early example is uh, the difference between Yahoo and Alta Vista and Google. Um, so if we go back to that hierarchy, um, whilst the Yahoo site is functional, reliable, more or less usable, and uh, it wasn't as um, convenient or pleasurable or even delightful, you know, the I'm feeling lucky uh, was uh, just at that little addition which made something pleasurable. Uh, we see it as well with MySpace and Facebook. Uh, so both MySpace and Facebook did the same thing. You know, they allowed you to connect with your friends and to share photos and to um, write little bits of text. Um, and, and that's not a typical MySpace, but that's what MySpace could look like. It could look like a complete mess. And if we go back, um, we can see that um, as well as uh, being more usable and convenient, uh, I think Facebook's emphasis on photos and uh, you know family uh, were the things that made it meaningful. It had personal significance. Um, and then, if we move on to my favorite example, WordPress. So 10 years ago, uh, I was asked by my uh, company at the time uh, to choose a CMS. And I went through 10 different CMSs, Drupal, Mod, Mod X, uh, all these things. Um, but WordPress was the one that had this five minute install. And this five minute install was great. You know, like it was the only one of all these PHP um, CMSs that was quick and easy to use. And um, talking more about meaning, um, if you go to meetup.com, this is uh, the uh, message you get. Uh, what do you love? Do more of it with Meetup. So. If you can get to the point of meaning, uh, then you know you can get to a point of um, creating users that come back again and again. Who find uh, pleasure in your site? I mean, I, I'm very interested in uh, web experiences that help um, bring people together, and I think um, that is an extra example of meaning. And so, if we're talking about user experience, what I'm going to do now is present a process. Um, so this is what I call the learning spiral of UX design. And the idea with this is that we all start from a position of relative ignorance. Um, so no matter how old our site is, um, we can always learn more. And with each stage of this uh, design process, we hope to learn more. And by learning more, we make better decisions. Um, and so we start off with some goals. Uh, now, these can be anything. A goal could be, um, you know, make more sales, get more visitors, uh, get more sign-ups to your mailing list, um, anything that you can track and that you can use as a way of um, focusing your efforts. Um, regarding that one of getting people signed up to your mailing list, you have to be very careful because, I mean, we're all bugged 
by these pop-ups uh, asking people to sign up to the mailing list, right? Um, but probably on the data end, it works, you know, because people do just type in email just to get rid of it. Um, but how many people here have just closed down a site because they've been so annoyed by it? So virtually everyone in here is uh, the most annoying thing ever. But when you're just looking at digits, you know, maybe you think, oh, yeah, we've got an extra 100 people on the mailing list. 100 possibly very gullible people that uh, are prepared to endure this. I mean, I don't know if, if you see the back end of this, often you get people swearing in these lists. Um, but yeah, you also need to track your bounce rate. Um, and so once you've established your goals, I think it's helpful to actually get um, some insight into your users or your potential users. Um, you can do this through um, online tools. So this is a demographics section of Google Analytics. Um, this is not uh, terribly helpful, but you know it does give you a little bit of insight in the type of people that are looking at your site. Uh, this one I really like. Uh, if you go to YouGov Profiles, um, you can type in any area of interest and they will use their data um, to give you your kind of correlations of what people who are interested in those things are like. Um, so what we have here, hopefully, is uh, people who enjoy yoga tend to be female, they tend to be young, um, they tend to be fairly well off and uh, pretty left wing. I mean, I don't know, I think like this yoga is like a communist, so. <laughs> Um, and uh, it also tells us what kind of things they enjoy in terms of entertainment. Uh, so they like Casper the Friendly Ghost, Marty Pello, and uh, Ken Morley. I mean, I don't know how they work that out. I mean, so, you know, in a way, this looks a bit like a, a, a stereotype. Um, I think it's based on about Okay, sample size. So it's only a sample size of 123. Maybe not take it too seriously. Uh, but maybe you'll find some insight in there um, uh, of something that, yeah, you know, like maybe, yeah, this will be something that you can use in a future uh, marketing campaign or something like that. Uh, you can also do ethnographic research. So uh, a friend of mine set up this Instagram account called Receipts from Tesco. And what she does is she goes to the self-service tills at her local kind of Tesco local, and she just takes uh, receipts and posts them on Instagram as a way of like getting an insight into what people are actually like. Um, okay. Uh, and so, I mean, the example you saw there, it, the person's got Red Bull, painkillers, and chocolate. <laughs> and like, that's, you know, like, that's quite an interesting insight into that person's life. Um, you can also um, actually observe people. So, uh, I mean, I really enjoyed uh, Kenda's talk, because, you know, we're talking about uh, system one and system two. Like, most of what we actually, um, most of our insights into people come from uh, what they do rather than what they say. We often tell people that we are into this, that, and the other, but um, we can, you know, really judge us by what we actually do. So if you go into a cafe, you know, maybe you can, you know, observe in a non-creepy way, like what people, what people's websites they're on, and what, you know, how they're interacting, what kind of distractions they have. Um, and um, yeah, I think, I think, you know, even talking to people, yeah, you know, like, uh, can be very helpful. Um, but like I say, you know, I think it's often better to observe what people do rather than what people say. Um, I find this really helpful. Once we've got our goals, our business goals, and once we've discussed our, our user needs, we get this crossover. 
where your um, business goals intersect with your user needs. And so the idea is that, you know, uh, one of your business goals might be to sell something. Uh, but that's not necessarily a user need, but maybe the user needs really informative content about, you know, WordPress or whatever. And through them accessing the thing they need, getting into your site through uh, Google, uh, you can kind of push them on to, you know, hiring you to help out. Um, and so, yeah, we just go back through this learning spiral, get our goals, do our research, and the next stage um, usually is to build a prototype. Um, so the idea is that we want to test our idea, our, um, our thesis as soon as possible. And there's plenty of um, kind of applications that will help you do this. This is something called Balsamic. Uh, which allows you to create a uh, mock-up that looks, it's all done in kind of Comic Sans. Uh, and the idea with this is that you're not distracted by the design and you can just focus purely on the actions. So you might present a typical user with something like this and then say to them, you know, can you tell me how to um, edit this page or something like that and see how they got on without being distracted by the design. Um, there's also Axure, which is a bit more um, uh, high, um, less, lo less lo-fi. Uh, Adobe Experience Design, uh, InVision. And the idea is that at each stage, you don't need to worry about um, the, uh, you don't need to worry about the back end. You can just build something very quickly, test it, you can click through this and uh, get some insights into how people use it. Uh, but I, as a, a WordCamp, I would recommend just using a WordPress, you know? You can go on wordpress.com, set up your content, put a few images, set up your pages, and in, what, two hours, you've got a site that is clickable, workable, readable, and uh, all importantly, uh, testable. Um, so, Again, there's uh, tools that will allow you to do uh, testing if you haven't got lots of human beings near you. Uh, Usability Hub have a whole suite of things like um, they do this five second test uh, where they uh, flash up your site for five seconds and then ask the user, you know, what is this site about? You know, what is the message of this site? And the idea is that you're tapping into that system uh, one uh, thinking. Uh, they also have a kind of comparison test. So this is uh, one uh, I did for City of Glasgow College when they designed their site. Um, and the new site had a 70% test rate. Uh, this is not kind of, uh, you know, it's not uh, amazing data. It's not going to change the world. Uh, but it is often helpful when you're dealing with a client or helping to inform your decisions to help make uh, different uh, tests and different prototypes. Um, this is user testing, which alongside um, what users do, they allow you to send a site to actual users all around the world and to get them to use it, speaking out loud, doing the tasks that you set them, and uh, what they'll send you back is a video. Uh, and at the end of that video, they'll do a website usability test. Um, and it's really, really uh, insightful to get that information, to see um, what people actually do. Um, Jacob Nielsen, uh, he, he kind of worked out that you only need about five uh, users to uncover 80% of your usability problems. Uh, so you don't need to test it with thousands of people um, but you can get very uh, good insights with just a few people. Um, so, um, my wife recently finished a, a yoga teacher training course. And at the end of that course, they uh, did a little uh, marketing segment and they asked people to create uh, their own site. And so she, what she did, uh, she went straight on to wordpress.com went through that big list of themes, and she chose this one, Karuna, uh, which apparently is Sanskrit for compassion. 
Uh, so learn something every day. Uh, and this Karuna theme, you know, it's just a free theme from uh, WordPress.com. I think it is actually, um, yeah, it's made by Automatic. So, you know, uh, fairly trustworthy. It should have everything you need. It's got a little kind of lotus flower logo and a photo of someone doing yoga. Uh, but as we saw earlier, you know, like just because you start with a theme that looks good here, once you've got your content and your um, photos, uh, it often looks very different. And, uh, you know, one size doesn't fit all. So this, oops, this is what she came up with. So, I mean, it didn't take her very long, but this is what she came up with. And what I did is that I uh, got someone to test this website. I <laughs> asked them the task to find out how much a uh, yoga class was. So they went on the home page, got this massive advert, which is what you get when you have a free website on wordpress.com. They scanned around the home page, see if there's anything on there. Uh, eventually clicked on classes and courses, uh, and then kind of scanned this information. <laughs> And what you'd be doing when you're asking someone to test is to speak out loud, to ask them what they're thinking. So this person, they had that table um, up there with the colored uh, units. Uh, I don't know if, actually, I don't know if we can kind of rewind that. Um, so this table is just an image. And they, you, see, you can see them clicking on that, clicking. Can I make it bigger? Because I can't read this at the moment. Uh, then they found this list of uh, classes and days. Uh, but I mean, can anyone point out any issues with this, just looking at it now? Too much? Yeah. Yeah, lots of scrolling. Uh, so I got them to speak out loud as they were doing it. Uh, yeah, and I was looking over their shoulder. So, so yeah, this is one that was done um, in, 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 in real life rather than with the automated tools. Um, so uh, one of the things they noticed uh, is that the, the yoga studio is completely empty. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> Like, that's a bad sign, right? Like, we don't want to practice in an empty yoga studio. Uh, they also yeah, pointed out the thing about the table, which was uh, not clickable and a bit all over the shop. Um, whoops. And um, if you go down, you can see that um, the prices, it's like prices for students, but, you know, like, are we a student? Like, do you have to be a student to get that rate? Um, so there's lots of confusion. We got lots of feedback in what, like two minutes of looking at the site, looking at real content. So what I'm going to do is uh, run through some heuristics, some kind of rules of thumb, of five things that we can look for on our own sites. Um, either when we're just looking at what we've got ourselves or when we're doing testing. Um, because we'll be a yogi. Like there's nothing in here that requires any jargon. You don't need to know anything about yoga to get started with this. Uh, the next thing is uh, make sure your design is purposeful. Uh, I really love Duolingo's home screen. Uh, it's so simple. Learn a language for free forever. Get started. Um, if we can boil down our USP into something that simple, then um, you know, we're going to make it super easy for our users to get started. Um, I mean, it does you know, carry on and you can find out more about the subject, but you know, why would you need any more? It's so simple. Uh, in yoga terms, we've got something similar. Experience hot yoga today, introductory offer. Very clear call to action. Uh, compare that to this one. Uh, Dante option, no real call to action. Um, lots of navigation options doing yogi, reiki, Swedish massage. It's kind of all over the shop. Uh, coming to this site, uh, you can see what they're thinking. It's like, oh, if we cover everything, 
people will come along and they'll do it. But actually, um, you know, you may end up just losing them entirely because, uh, what is it, decision fatigue, that's the word. Um, so I'm a bit uh, ambivalent about this. So um, I, I would say in the first stages, follow conventions. You may have seen this joke, which is uh, the idea that all websites look the same now, right? Like we see this again and again and again. Um, and you can understand the thinking that people want to, it to be frictionless. Um, so here's an example of that. It's almost exactly the same, right? Like uh, the three boxes, the big call to action, and the navigation along the top. Uh, I think WordPress does a pretty good job of not making all the themes look like this, but there are plenty that do. Um, but yeah, like I say, I think those conventions uh, need to be treated carefully. Um, so it's become a convention recently to have a hamburger menu. Everyone's got a hamburger menu. It's simple, it's clean, um, but the, we should test these things. Uh, Luke Wroblewski, who's a, a designer, um, he did some uh, tests with Google Analytics on an app that changed from having a three menu item, just a very simple menu, to a hamburger menu. And they lost kind of 40%. Okay, so uh, I think I've got an example up here. Uh, oh yeah, there, uh, so a hamburger menu, sorry, is those three lines there. So this is a, a good example. There's like people at a WordPress conference that don't know what a hamburger menu is, and lots of people won't. So it's supposed to be a hamburger because it's got a top layer, a middle layer, and a bottom layer. And all your navigation is hidden uh, behind there. But if you can test these things, test it with users. Uh, see if it makes a difference if you add the word menu. You know, like maybe that will make it clear enough uh, for people that aren't aware of it. Um, but yeah, this is what you get when you have something that doesn't follow any conventions. It's a little bit of a mess. You don't really know where you are. You've got to learn the site uh, every time. It's not completely frictionless. And uh, finally, clarity. Again, this navigation, there's a kind of uh, a rule that says that kind of more than seven bits of information on a navigation uh, becomes uh, too confusing to choose. So if you can kind of limit that down, uh, it'll often be a lot more helpful for your users and to tap into system one. If you compare these navigation items, um, this one actually covers, you know, in six, in six words, what this does in about 12. Um, so things like, um, you know, like a studio and about, you know, they can easily be put into one and maybe, you know, you can break up the page to make that easier to use. Uh, so this was the before we gave the usability testing and uh, this is after. So it hadn't changed radically, but it just been simplified a little bit. Uh, the navigation items uh, were simple. I should, I should say um, the goal of this site is not to kind of take over the world. It's just to establish herself as a yoga teacher. Um, and uh, yeah, um, yeah, she was very appreciative. So hopefully uh, these kind of ideas, this kind of awareness of what's going on when people are visiting your site, um, actual testing with human beings uh, is something that you can all actually go home and use, even if you're just um, downloading themes from the WordPress uh, theme library. Any questions? What what have you got in your menu then? What's the I think you've got more problems than the drop down. Yeah, it's, it's like a, that relationship with a client where you've got to 
um, I mean, you can use data, you know, like do an A-B testing maybe and, um, and see which one leads to more conversions or clicks or something like that. Um, that's one way around it. But yeah, usability testing. Um, if you can test both, then you can arm yourself with data because otherwise design just becomes a matter of opinion. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think over 50% of visits on, you know, at least all the websites I made make are, um, you know, visits from a mobile phone. I know, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think WordPress is a journey as well. So you may start out with a free site, but it's quite easy to transfer all of that content into a self-hosted solution. And, you know, people might get more into customizing the site. Um, I guess what I'm trying to emphasize is that um, improving your design doesn't mean adding a load of plugins, doesn't mean adding sliders. It could often just be taking away stuff and focusing on what your user needs are. So, uh, just uh, you, on the right, left first. Um, did you get any feedback when you were testing the users on Stockwood versus uh, um, that's a good. That's a good question. I mean, if you can have your own photos, then ideally do use them. Um, I think especially uh, because people become clued in. I guess it depends how kind of clued in your users are. If, if that photo is seen in multiple places, um, you may end up being associated with um, other people. But yeah, it's a good question of like whether it's better to have a great photo that's a stock photo or a mediocre, authentic photo. Um, I mean, I, I would strongly recommend getting professional Photography it can make a huge difference uh, to your site. Uh, so. um, my question is about: um, Is there any easy way of testing when you are actually creating a site to actually see people to interact and maybe um, you know, like an online course together or something? That's not as easy to go through as a single you know user testing the site because you need to collaborate and interact with people and say how it feels or. Do you have an example of that? Like how, how? But if you want to set up an online learning site, for example, yeah, and then people have to work together, and now you set it all up and you want to know does this actually work. Um, but obviously, if you send one user, like you said, in to go through and watch them, they're not going to get the experience they will ultimately have because there isn't the other group there to interact with. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess you get some tips on you in terms of if you get them through the interaction part, but you can't make them experience that unless you send a couple of dummy people um, on at the same time. And, um, so do you have any experience with that or tips on how to test that before going live with WordPress? Yeah, I think if you could get a room together of everyone in the same room, so you know they're all working at the same time. Um, I think especially there's lots of community groups yeah. in Scotland. Um, so uh, I've, I've done uh, some testing um, on a website um, in Renfrewshire, which is providing advice to people. And we just got everyone on uh, around a table, all using the sites independently. Um, but just, it's a very comfortable situation for people to speak out loud and to talk to each other whilst they were testing. Um, so, and I think, yeah. Say, you know, this is going to be a two month test, go for it, it's free at this moment, you'll get a special.
actually structurally also when I go fly. So are there any guidelines for any I specific about the five people to be able to engage with some of the problems that are pretty interesting? But in order to have value on this platform, there has to be a certain amount of consumers, a certain amount of professionals to get supply and demand in the marketplace. Yeah, I mean, I think if you could get that number of people using something that they're not already using, like if the if the uh, if the the thing you're offering is appealing enough that people will use it, uh, because it's very difficult to get people to change their habits anyway and to do something uh, new. But um, yeah, I would just try and get as many people as early as possible um, to use it because. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I know like people set up a minimum viable product just using Facebook, right? Like they didn't even, they just created a group and got people to post every day, like how much exercise they've done, how many calories they post, they consumed. It was like a um, testing for uh, an app uh, for like weight loss or whatever. And, uh, you know, it was impossible to get people using it for more than a week people got bored or you know like it became um you know a, a form of shame or embarrassment like maybe oh we haven't done as well as we did in the first few days it's like that kind of um new year's resolution syndrome where you give up after a little while so um yeah i mean without seeing it i would i would suggest just open it up and i don't know maybe what kenda was saying about giving it value. So yeah, maybe the way you frame uh, that offer, that introductory offer, you know, as a big discount or something to present it as something that people will want to carry on using. They're getting a lot, you know, like thousands of pounds of value by using it. So, so, uh, yeah. Time for one more, if there is one. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, that's why, you know, if you go on Twitter or something and say, oh, we're offering 20 pounds to you know, test something, you often get people who aren't the type of people you want, you know. Um, so uh, again, if you can contact a community group of something, of people that are interested in um, the thing you're offering. Uh, so I recently did some uh, user testing on Glasgow's sexual health website and uh, there's plenty of kind of um, you know uh, groups uh, interested you know like LGBT Youth Scotland or whatever um, who provided um, a community center where we could go through um, the website so yeah uh, and uh, yeah just a big room but getting people one-on-one -on -one, I think is uh, more valuable often um, relaxed environment keep uh, you know keep things flowing and just have very focused tasks the things that you uh, are interested in people achieving so whether that's signing up for the site or um, yeah or whatever yeah anyway thank you great okay thanks Neil